My name is Hazel Burrows. My colleagues and I are delighted to be here amongst such a wealth of expertise as part of the World Anti-Bullying Forum here at the Helix, Cape Mila Falcha. I am one of four educationalists who will be speaking to you during this workshop on the subject of conflict resolution skills, in particular mediation as a means of resolving conflict and our experiences of introducing this topic within our very different educational settings. However, before I go any further, some of you may be wondering what business we mediating teachers have here at this World Forum on Anti-Bullying. As we know, and as is detailed in this slide, the criteria for bullying is repetition, intention, and power imbalance. If not challenged, these behaviors can progress from covert to overt by the bully towards their victim. In equipping students with key skills, it is possible that they can recognize the potential for conflict more readily and enable them to take positive action in order to address the issue or have the necessary vocabulary or understanding to seek help before it escalates into bullying. So mediating teachers, where did it all begin? In October of 2018, DCU's anti-bullying unit with the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators collaborated to offer mediation training for teachers with a view to using it within the school environment. The idea being to enhance or indeed consolidate the broad range of skills required to be an effective teacher or leader in an educational setting. Mediation is not part of the teacher training program in Ireland at present. However, mediation and conflict resolution knowledge are key skill sets essential to the challenges teachers are faced with every day in wanting to do the best for their students. These skills are essential to, to de-escalate and dissipate situations that can disrupt teaching and learning for all, to empower students to problem solve with greater confidence and to promote independence and self-esteem, to facilitate communication and healing should opposing sides in a conflict become polarized and thus seemingly paralyzed from moving forward, to bring disengaged and disenfranchised stakeholders to the table enabling everyone's voice to be heard and to work collectively to a best outcome for the student. These are just some examples. So Teachers as Mediators was formed and we completed our training. My colleagues and I, Gary Levin, Anne Doyle and Jason Horseman, sitting here beside me, represent a diverse group reflecting a variety of educational contexts within Ireland thus covering a broad spectrum of experience and range of settings delivering to pupils aged from 8 to 18. This led to very interesting insights and discussions regarding our different contexts and how we manage behaviour, bullying, well-being and positive relationships for students in our care. Now I will hand you over to my colleague Gary to learn a bit more about the training that we undertook. Thank you. Hi, um, <clears throat> so the graphic above there is just to show the first few steps we've taken. Um, it has to be noted that this is the start of something. This isn't the, uh, uh, the end of a study. We're, we're not coming here with, uh, today with... Um, there's some really impressive studies outside. There's lo lovely graphics. We're, we're at the start of, of, of something. Um, so I'm just going to talk about the steps we went through um, so far, and maybe have a bit of a, we can have a bit of a chat about uh, where we're going from here. So um, we uh, began as a group of six. We're now four uh, teachers who uh, started the commercial mediation course um, in October, the October midterm break in 2018. Um, the course was uh, delivered by Keith Kelleher, who's here today. Uh, it was also sponsored. It was uh, free of charge to us teachers. Uh, the CI Arb, the, um, they sponsored it uh, with a view to bring in mediation skills into schools. Uh, two of the gentlemen responsible are here today. That's Keith Kelleher and, and Jim Bridgman. So big thanks to them. Um, the course uh, for six teachers it was a commercial mediation course, and I really, really do f 
I felt sorry for Keith when we first started. Um, Keith is a quantity surveyor. He is an expert in construction disputes. We are not. We couldn't get our head around the figures. There was contracts in the, in the role plays, tens and hundreds of thousands in dispute. Um, but we as teachers, we were just, our attitude was, forget the money, just save the relationship. Just make sure everyone goes home. Uh, so there was a kind of, uh, we had to meet in the middle there, and poor Keith, we, we, we nearly broke him down. Um, amazingly, the six of us passed, and I believe uh, it was the first time that, that uh, there had been a 100% pass rate among a group who had done the mediation course. And before people cry foul, it was um, assessed independently, not just by uh, the people who had interest in, in, in pushing this, this project forward. Um, the, when we uh, qualify, or when we were um, completed the, the mediation course, we had to get together and say, okay, we've done a commercial mediation course. It doesn't bear relevance specifically to the school setting. How can we bring these skills that we've learned and apply them to the school setting? How can we impart it to, to the students? Um, so we got together uh, and created a bit of a roadmap. And um, as you've seen from the, the previous slide, we're coming from, we're all, in education, but we're coming from so many different angles. We have a, a deputy principal, myself a behavior for learning teacher, we have a primary school teacher, and a science uh, teacher in, in a post-primary school. So it was very difficult to say, okay, let's do this. We're dealing with different age groups, different contexts. Um, there were some of the, the challenges we came across. Uh, the lessons we decided to, to come up with we came up with two definitive lessons. Uh, I'll speak a bit more about them, but these lessons had to cover a broad range of, as I said, ages, context, genders. Um, they look the same on paper, but if you were in any one of our classrooms while it was being delivered, it would probably look like a completely different lesson. There was uniformity in the lesson plan, but in delivering it, as you'll see, as you'll hear from each of us are going to speak about our experience of delivering it, there was, there was some big differences. Um, and as I said as well, it's, this is not this, this, a summary of a huge study done. This is the start of a project. Um, and we've no hard facts or statistics, have no pie chart to put up here to say, this solved conflict in the school. This prevented bullying by whatever percentage. Um, but often, if anyone uh, here is involved in educational interventions, sometimes the most important and effective interventions are immeasurable. Um, anyway, we, del we del uh, delivered the lessons um, in the, uh, spring, uh, over the spring term. Um, and as we even when we got together to, to talk about the lessons, we wanted to deliver what we had experienced in the training course. The training course was excellent. We got straight, we were into role plays, and it was brilliant. But then we realized, hang on, how are we going to teach these to deal with conflict and resolve conflict? We have to teach them what conflict is. So we really had to pair it back. So you'll see that from the lesson. So lesson one was uh, just to introduce the idea of conflict. Um, to introduce the concept of conflict to students uh, and to develop their understanding of conflict. Uh, it might seem like a very rudimentary, basic thing, but we really had to make sure they had the foundation blocks uh, to resolve conflict, but they can't resolve it if they don't know what it is. Uh, I'll speak a bit more about, uh, in my group, just how uh, important I found it uh, to start from this basic block uh, la later in the presentation. The objectives were to, uh, the students would be able to explain in their own words what conflict means, that they'd be able to identify conflict in others, because it's much easier for students to identify conflict elsewhere than, it, that, than in themselves. Then we hope to progress it to them uh, identifying conflict, conflict in their own lives. Um, ultimately, that they'd understand that conflict has both benefits benefits and costs. Um, the best way we found to get through that was to show them some videos. Uh, there was other activities, but really the, the videos, I'm going to show a selection of, of, of some that we showed, 
really brought them in, and it was great discussion points. Um. <sighs> Hello, Queen Lisa. <gasps> Bart, what are you doing in my room? Lisa, certain differences, rivalries, if you will, have come up between us. At first, I thought we could talk it over like civilized people. But instead, I just ripped the head off Mr. Honey Bunny. Bart, that was your cherished childhood toy. Ah, Mr. Honey Bunny! <laughs> Quiet down, Bart! Bart, just get out of here. Hey, it's a free country. You get out. That doesn't make sense. I know you are, but what am I? Get out, get out! Okay. But on my way, I'm gonna be doing this. If you get hit, it's your own fault. Okay, then I'm gonna start kicking air like this. And if any part of you should fill that air, uh, it's your own fault. Uh, 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 oh, I better go check that out. Now, Homer, don't you eat this pie. Okay. All right, Pie. I'm just going to do this. Hop, 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 hop. And if you get eaten, it's your own fault. Okay, um, so it's a fun way of bringing up the topic of, of uh, conflict. Conflict can be quite a heavy, very serious topic at times, particularly if you're trying to get students to look at it in their own lives. But first we have to introduce, one, conflict is normal. It happens. It happens between siblings. As you show from the next uh, video, it happens between adults. So we really wanted to normalize conflict and say that it does happen. It is going to happen. How are you going to deal with it? Is the, is the, next, the, the next part of the, the, the program. There's nobody on overtime. There's nobody working on the weekends. There's a lot that could be done to have this done a lot sooner. Steve. I'm here every day. <clears throat> well, she lives on the first floor, and you, so I mean, I don't see... I care about my other neighbors. Well, I mean, so I mean... The, pe the, the it, it was, it's scheduled, it's a contracted job. Um, we don't tell the elevator company when, when to work their people. They submit a, a schedule to us. They said they could do the elevator in six weeks. Wow. So all we're, all, all we're trying to hold them to, to is, is meeting their deadline. Um, as far as working, doing elevator repairs, six, seven, eight o'clock at night, I don't see that as being a typical process, nor do I, is it a typical process to be right, working on it. We've got to go now. I want to okay. thank you both. Thank, thank you. you. All right, it's back to you, Jim. Allie, uh, don't let her go away. This, uh, that, that's, uh, what, does she have a response to that? Is she still there? What's that? Did, did the lady just leave? Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. We should, we should have kept uh, that discussion. She's back if you want her. Yes. She heard you. Yes. What would you like to know? I would like to know uh, a response to what the gentleman said. The gentleman's a very effective spokesperson for the, for the company, but uh, obviously the people who live there are not satisfied with his explanation. Right. So what do you want now? Well, if I have to teach you how to be a reporter, Ali, I'll do that later. Oh, why don't you do that later, Jim? Uh, I think the lady expressed herself, and uh, you're not here, you're there. Would, is there any question you'd like me to ask her? And no, I, I, I'll, I'll give you lessons on how to become a reporter later no, I'll on. give you some lessons on how to be an editor, because I was your boss once. Yeah, you were, and are no longer. How did that happen? Uh, well, I don't Here's know. Here's Erin Hey, Good morning, Jim. We are live. So... Um, I suppose the first video, the Simpsons video, the students could connect with that. That happened four times to me today, you know. Um, but what really kind of shocked them was, here's professional adults, and conflict can happen. That really, they, really, they got great enjoyment out of it, but it really did normalize it. And I even went as far as saying, you know, that happens in our staff room sometimes. That happens between teachers. They were like, what? Would you actually, you know? Um, so it was a really nice way to kind of start the conversation about it rather than kind of delve straight in, tell me about conflict in your life. Lesson two followed on for this. So it was having introduced conflict, we wanted to determine the students' responses uh, to reducing or resolving conflict. Um, so, okay, conflict has happened, you understand it. Uh, what do you think you can do about it? 
So the objectives were to recall the examples of conflict, that they'd be able to identify mechanisms to resolve conflict, and that ultimately they'd be able to challenge various mechanisms of conflict and conflict resolution. Now, that's, kind of, that's high ideals for two 40-minute lessons. Again, just going back to it, this is, this is the start of a project that we hope to develop further. Um, but it was a really successful start, I think, we, we, we all found. The follow-on was, was varied amongst each of us. We didn't all do the same thing. I'll speak in detail about the group that I did it with, and, and my colleagues will speak about the, their groups that, that they did it with. Um, the, sorry, yeah, it was optional. The, what, the, we didn't have to do a follow-on, but I think the fact that each of us found the first two lessons to be quite successful, quite enjoyable for the students, which is the, you know, the lead into learning, uh, that we did we individually, without consultation, we decided to do a follow-on ourselves. I'm going to hand you over uh, to Hazel again, and she will be uh, speaking about her experience uh, in her classroom. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Um, my pupils, I'm the primary school teacher in this group here, so my pupils are slightly younger. Um, my pupils, not quite students yet. Um, I had to consider the needs of my audience. So they're a group of six class pupils, boys and girls, 26 in total, with an age range of 10 to 12 years. They're in the final year of primary school, otherwise known as national school here in Ireland. It is with this in mind I had to make some modifications to the lesson plans. The group has three pupils who have um, SEN needs, special educational needs, and they need to be included in any lesson a teacher might deliver to that particular group. Um, the needs that they have relate to intellectual capacity and some behavioural needs. So due to their age range, I wasn't um, able to show one of the clips perks of being a wallflower because that's intended for an older age group than they, are, they presently belong to. However, none of that detached from the lesson, um, the lesson deliveries overall. So the next slide I'm going to show you is just really the children in action, a series of photographs. We started with a brainstorming session about the word conflict. Here we see two pupils out of a group of four contributing to a mind map about what they thought the word conflict means. At this point, I was met with a flurry of students coming up to me seeking reassurance as to whether their understanding of the word was correct. They had some idea, but weren't entirely confident that their interpretation was correct. Others had no clue whatsoever, and again, they sought me to clarify what the word meant. Um, I deliberately didn't do this, and instead asked that they might see what comes up in their group. Does it affirm or confirm what they thought it was? Does it come close to what they thought it was? Or does it totally turn their ideas 360 degrees on their head? Um, does it totally change their understanding and interpretation of the word conflict? So, again, we have another screenshot here, a photograph of the pupils having shared their thoughts on conflict and what it means. The pupils were then asked to consider sources of conflict in their lives in their own lives. Again, we shared the ideas and had a whole class discussion, followed by the video links that my go colleague Gary referred to earlier. And as you can imagine, the nature of the videos um, being cartoons and snippets of news documentaries and a football clip, which you haven't seen as yet, they spurred a lively debate uh, amongst this age group, which surprised and delighted me. Um, there was some laughter and there was a high level of shock and awe um, and surprise, particularly in relation to the sporting and the professional rivalry video, which you have seen there. Um, the children felt very unsettled. Um, they felt it was really inappropriate, somewhat shocking. And in their words, they said that it was scary to see adults fight like that and to do so publicly. They felt embarrassed and they felt very, um, well, one of them used the word, we felt afraid and, oh gosh, I wouldn't like to be in that environment. I wouldn't like it if my parents went on like that or if my dad behaved like that. So there's a lesson in that for us all. That was their honest response to that. Um, this is uh, just another depiction of the children discussing um, their findings in relation to the costs and the benefits of conflict, because that's something else that we discussed. And their responses were very interesting again. They got quite quickly to the point that it would clear the air it would make life in school feel better if that they didn't have to avoid somebody. This is the class whiteboard at the end of the second lesson, having discussed the meaning of the word, the sources of conflict, and then the cost and the benefit to having conflict. 
An interesting point that came from this was how easily primary school children could relate the big issues of the day as sources of conflict. And examples of that being that drug or alcohol abuse in the family, around the family, near the family, in the neighborhood, within society, cyberbullying, even if they hadn't been directly affected by it, there was an acute awareness around it, and some noting the impact that they perceived it had on others, or seen that it had on others, racism, separation, divorce, loss of a job on the family um, in relation to the income, the lifestyle that they had, and a very real one, unfortunately, in Ireland and in many places today, homelessness. And some of the children that we work with are living in with a state of homelessness. They're in temporary accommodation. So very real and current issues for them. Some um, significant insights from the pupils were that children can be silly. Children will be silly. Children will do silly things. Children are in the process of learning to do better but that the reporters fighting was just not well received. They kept returning back to this. They did not like seeing it. There was giggles, but I think some of that was a level of anxiety um, or an element of fear around it, shock, awe, as I said earlier. Um, they also acknowledged that it can be very scary, again, a word that they use to address conflict with somebody, but that it's important to do it because, again, as I had said earlier, they said it makes life at school, uh, school life easier. When we proceeded to discuss sources of conflict in school or at home, they were less responsive and less forthcoming. It indicated how seemingly small infractions towards one another, such as taking resources without asking, grabbing a pen from a colleague or the person or a peer beside them, jeering, name calling um, in the yard or during games, in the course of play, as the um, silly name calling as they coined it, similar to what Lisa and Bart Simpson did in the video. They are not seen as serious enough to be defined as sources of conflict. Yet, in reality, we know that they are. Um, having discussed all this with the pupils and received their feedback and shared this, we then went on to discuss possible resolution strategies of which mediation featured. Um, we discussed setting up a mini mediation task, and what's depicted here is one of the female students in the middle acting as a mediator between the football coach and players. One player felt aggrieved that he wasn't picked, even though he had thought he was the best player and was often thought of as the best player. The coach didn't dispute his skills, but not turning up to practice sessions called his commitment into question. Thankfully, all ended well, and the football player was given another chance to prove himself. But they, they had very little instruction and time, and mediation is a big concept for adults. And the processes of mediation, as Gary had pointed out, was a big, uh, was a structure and a process for us to go through and learn through. And yet they took on elements of it very easily. Um, like most of the school, our school advocates to be a telling school. Should anyone feel that they are experiencing bullying or need, indeed, um, need to share a concern, they know that that's something that is advocated in the school, expected of them, and cultivated within the school. Thankfully, the majority of the children um, perceive this as a strategy in which to deal with a conflict between their peers. They responded well to the concept of mediation and in particular to the idea that a trusted teacher or fellow student, not a friend of either party, they added, could help solve the problem and suggested members of the, that the student council could possibly go forward for this role in the future. So, Gary mentioned the third session, which was optional, which I did with my students. Uh, so a week after the initial session, we, um, we created a focus group from the class to give their reflections on the topic. Key points confirmed from the feedback were that they had a clearer understanding of the word conflict and possible sources of conflict. One child reporting that this made me think how X was feeling, so I stopped myself from calling her by her nickname. That a small thing can become a big problem if not addressed to grow positive relationships by communicating or getting help with communicating. That since the lessons concluded, they had thought about who would make a good mediator and put forward three names from their class. They liked the idea that another adult would help, but thought it was a better idea if they could sort it out with another student as the mediator. For me, this indicated a level of self-efficacy and agency in resolving their own issues. Their class representative will be putting the idea to the student council at the next meeting. The class teacher, another colleague and I reflected on the lesson and the children's feedback. We concluded that the topic of conflict resolution would fit, ugh, excuse me, would fit well within SPHE, that's social, personal and health education here in Ireland, 
well-being comes underneath that jurisdiction of SPHE, either cultural, religious education or geographical studies, if that was something that could be explored in the future. So it was my conclusion with the, my pupils aged 10 to 12 in primary school um, that mediation certainly has a place within education and it certainly has a place for the teachers too in their training. So I hope you enjoyed my part of the presentation and now I'm going to hand you over to my colleague Anne Doyle who will take you, uh, tell you about her experience. Good morning. Um, so I'm Anne and I come from a school down the road, uh, Ard Scullerish. It's a voluntary secondary school run by the Edmund Rice School Trust. Um, I teach all ages in there from 12 to 18, but I chose um, my third year group who are boys aged uh, between 14 to 15 years old. Uh, the reason I chose this uh, particular group is because I teach them both science and um, social personal and health education, SPHE. Um, so I felt that this um, discussion on conflict would fit well into the SPHE uh, curriculum. Um, I also chose this group because I know them well. I've been teaching them for the past um, three years. So they, uh, we built up a good working relationship whereby uh, they're comfortable with discussing uh, a variety of concepts uh, in the class. And lastly, the last reason I chose this particular group to work with is because I know there, was, there has been some incidences of bullying in the class over the last few uh, years. Um, so the first, I, I'm just going to go through my experience of the first and second lesson. So um, I followed the plans that uh, were made the, that Gary went through earlier on. Um, so initially, just like in Hazel's um, experience, the class had a, they had a, a real lack of an understanding of the term conflict. But bear in mind that these uh, students that I was working with uh, are significantly older than the students that Hazel was working with. So it kind of exposes a gap in the Irish education system in um, addressing conflict and um, the meaning behind it. So I found that uh, the video clips really did help with um, the students kind of grounding them in what conflict meant. So they, they really didn't have much of an idea before that. Uh, but after the video clips, particularly the, the Simpsons video clip, and then the uh, sports video clip, which you didn't see there, um, there was a conflict on a pitch. Now the school that I work in and the class group I have are particularly sporty. Um, so this really kind of resonated with them which was very useful. So once they, they got a, more of an idea of what conflict meant to them, they could come up with their own uh, examples of conflict, um, which happens to them in, an every, in their everyday lives and which could happen to them too. Um, so that was the first lesson. Then in the second lesson, I, I found it quite surprising that when we started t talking about conflict resolution, uh, a lot of the students mentioned aggressive behavior and violence as ways to um, resolve a conflict. Um, now, on reflection, uh, a lot of the students would have been um, coming from the background of the sports conflict. They kind of were really fixated on that for a while, so we had to come away from that a bit too. Um, so, naturally, the discussion on conflict moved towards bullying. And the students did recognize that uh, there was an opportunity to prevent bullying by resolving conflict before a behavior could develop into bullying. So I, because I teach SPHE once a week with this class group, I had some more time than some of the other teachers had. So I had uh, an opportunity to extend on these lessons. Um, and I have two extension activities to, that I'll discuss with you now. Um, the first one, was um, my class group worked in small groups first uh, to come up with a, a method to um, address a scenario in which conflict has arisen. So uh, they did this in small groups first and then we worked as a class group to come up with this model up here. Um, so they came up with the idea that they'd need time to cool off, 
they both, uh, all people involved in the conflict would need to agree to work it out. Um, they'd need to give their points of view, of view on the problem that, um, to each other. And then they would discuss ways to solve the problem. So the class were pretty happy with this method. Um, and then we said that we'd test it. So from the very first lesson and their examples of when conflict arises in their own lives, I had taken down a few of their own examples. Uh, and these are two of the examples that they had given me. So one of them that kind of came up quite a lot was, you overhear one of your classmates slagging one of your friends behind their back. Uh, slagging meaning uh, making fun of your friends behind their back. And the second one that we looked at was one of your friends stops talking to you because you still talk to his ex-girlfriend or boyfriend. Um, now, in order to uh, look at these two scenarios, I introduced a role play activity. So the reason I introduced role play was because during our uh, training in the mediation course, we had to do role plays. And just like it took us a little while to get into the role plays and really understand that we were trying to do something constructive, uh, it took quite a while for the lads to kind of get on board with that. But they did eventually, and they took it seriously in the end. Um, and they actually came up um, with the fact that sometimes the conflict can't be fully resolved by the people who are experiencing it. And sometimes that they'll need some help from another person to um, deal with the problem. Um, so that led nicely onto the second extension activity, which was um, introducing mediation uh, and then more role play. So introducing the, the mediation was quite interesting because, again, like the teachers, uh, some of the teachers on the course, including myself, initially when you hear about mediation, um, we, we kind of thought, well, how is that going to help? And, and the boys really couldn't understand. They said, how is, um, how is somebody supposed to help a situation without judging the people or giving advice? They just couldn't understand how that could happen. So um, after discussing that for a while and a few arguments, a bit of conflict there as well, um, we, I gave them another scenario um, as a role play to carry out. Now, this was a more detailed role play. So just briefly, uh, again, it was kind of it was taken from their own discussions from the first two lessons that we uh, that we went through. Um, but the role play was that a group of five friends. Um, there was a group of five friends since primary school. Uh, two of the friends organised a cinema trip, leaving one friend out. This one friend found out about it and got the mothers involved. So the parents were involved. Um, the friends are all in the same base class group, and the two friends that weren't involved in planning or, le or left out uh, wanted the friends to go back to the way it was before. Because that's a very common um, sentence, I suppose, that you'd hear in secondary schools, like, why can't it just be like it was before? Um, so each party involved were given extra detail and background information to be kept private um, from the other party which again uh, comes from the course that we did ourselves with the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators. Um, uh, because it, it kind of, it, it, uh, it helps with making the scenario real in that usually um, uh, the lads themselves found that sometimes it's not really about the action that was taken, but there's, there's deeper problems rooted in there. So um, this extra detail kind of helped uh, with them understanding how this conflict arose in the first place. So how did the task go? Well, the students found it pretty difficult, to be quite honest, uh, because there was a lot of them involved in this conflict. Uh, and there was a bit of messing at the start. But we did get through a few uh, sessions of the role play. Um, and although, no, um, the, although the conflict wasn't um, resolved, in the end, um, it was successful in that um, the students were trying to resolve the conflict verbally. So they had really, there was, no, there was no mention of the squaring up to each other the way they were saying in the first lesson or the second lesson. They were trying to go through the problem verbally and talk about their feelings and emotions. And that was a big deal for this particular class group. And actually, 
it, most of the class groups I teach, um, they wouldn't really be, uh, they wouldn't really be groups that would talk about their emotions a lot. Um, so it was fantastic to see that they were, um, that they were using their emotions and talking through the problems. And uh, it, it was a good way of introducing mediation too. And again, uh, just like Hazel's group, my class group kind of uh, mentioned that it would probably be more appropriate if a more senior student um, was to mediate rather than one of their classmates who knew both of the uh, parties involved. Um, so to conclude, my evaluation on the uh, lessons that we gave, um, I felt that the students were engaged with the lessons. They showed deep thought and reflection. And um, their learning indicated that they wanted to explore ideas on conflict resolution and prevent bullying. Um, so bullying did uh, keep on cropping up throughout all of the different activities that we did. And um, they saw that connection there between conflict and bullying. Um, and then I feel as a teacher, um, wishing to facilitate the development of students into a well-rounded uh, person and one that's ready for the real world when they leave, that there is a need to introduce um, conflict resolution skills such as mediation into the Irish education system, um, indeed at primary school level and second, um, secondary school level. And as a final note, uh, there is an opportunity to introduce this into the Irish education system as our curriculum is currently going through a curriculum reform where um, well-being is a major focus. The well-being of students is a major focus. So perhaps there will be um, some implementation in the near future. Uh, and I'm going to pass you over to Gary now and thank you for your time. Okay, so as I uh, said earlier on, I'm a behaviour for learning teacher in, um, in O'Connell School. I'll tell you a bit more about the school, but I know some people mightn't be too familiar with the role. So behaviour for learning uh, is the allocation of a, a full-time teacher to schools who have um, ongoing difficulties dealing with ch challenging behaviour in schools. It's allocated by the National Council for Special Education. Uh, and my primary role is to, um, well, there, there's three levels that I'm tasked to work with. So level one would be the whole school approaches to positive behavior, uh, working with staff, uh, working on whole school initiatives uh, to uh, improve and to promote positive behavior. Uh, level two work is the kind of work that I did here with the mediation group that I'm going to speak about. It's a targeted group where needs are identified, uh, be they academic, social, emotional, well-being, or just general behavior for learning, how to, how to get on in the mainstream class. Uh, level three then would be uh, intensive behavior interventions uh, for individuals um, who are at serious risk of dropping out of school or being expelled from school. The um, school that I'm uh, working in is O'Connell School. It's not too far from here, it's just in the north inner city. Uh, as you can see from the picture, that Crow Park is just behind it there, so it really is very, very central in Dublin. There's uh, 200 boys enrolled, approximately 200 boys uh, enrolled in the school, um, and it's a DESH school. So for those that aren't familiar with it, DESH is an initiative um, of the Department of Education, uh, where extra funding and extra resources is given to schools uh, who are in uh, disadvantaged uh, areas, socio and economic uh, disadvantaged, disadvantaged area. North Inner City, Dublin is one of those areas. Uh, it's also one of the first schools that uh, Edmund Rice uh, founded. Uh, it's all approaching 200 years old, and the reason he founded it uh, kind of lives true to this day. He founded it uh, when he heard the, the kind of poor children out on the streets, and he, he decided to start a school first down in Waterford, 
Uh, there was no schools then for, for uh, young Catholic children. Uh, and then the second one he set up was O'Connell School in Dublin. So we like to think that we do try to carry on that tradition and the spirit of Edmund Rice in, the, in our school. Um, the target group that I worked with, as I said, I'm not a regular mainstream teacher, so I uh, was able to pick and choose who, who I could work with and who was in need. All through the mediation course that we did um, with, with Keith, um, there was just a group of boys popping up in my head who could really do with it. They could have done with it probably four or five years previous to this um, to really get at the root of the, the problem. You know, it's their, their lives, their way of communicating is constant conflict. Uh, so much so that when we did the first lesson, it really took some going over to, um, you know, to show no, that conflict's not just war. It's not just people, you know, in a physical fight. Conflict is the way you're speaking to each other all the time. Um, and that kind of rolled out over the three or four lessons that we did together. Um, I, what, st what stood out for me from, the, uh, from lesson one was we, one activity ha we had was a walking debate. So one side of the classroom was true, one side of the classroom was false. So I'd come out with a statement and the boys would walk to whichever side of the room they agreed with, true or false. So one of the statements uh, was, you've been involved in conflict in the last two days. So two of the boys walked to true. They admitted, yes, I've been in conflict. One of the boys walked to false. That boy was ju had just returned to school after a day's suspension for fighting, uh, but just couldn't, he really, you know, he, he couldn't see the conflict w within himself. So that's kind of just to illustrate where we're starting from. Um, they are a very endearing group of boys. They, were, they really were, they were great to work with, but their first instinct was to taunt and tease each other. And then the default reaction to that was to lash out both physically and verbally. Um, this didn't, and when speaking to uh, Helena from the Anti-Bullying Centre about this, it didn't constitute bullying per se in that each of them were doing it to each other, but there was certainly a conflict that needed to be uh, resolved. Um, did it work? The two 40-minute lessons and the, the, the little bit of follow-on we did, it did not solve all the problems and nor can two or three isolated lessons. Um, the hope is that it planted a seed with the, with the boys. For the first time, they had to sit around and look, at e look each other in the eye and explain, when you say this, it actually really does make me mad. Um, it was the first time they'd done that. Now, they might have gone back outside the classroom and continued doing it, repeated doing it. They've been doing it for years. They've been doing it. It's been a problem in primary school. Um, so it would be false of me to say, sorted, solved. I mediated that problem and it's gone now. That's not realistic. But hopefully a seed was planted amongst the boys um, that sitting down, talking, identifying the problem could be the way forward. For conclusion, for how did it, how, how did it work? What it really, or what was the benefits of, the, of this uh, mediation program? It helped develop empathy amongst the three boys that I worked with. It didn't, as I said, it, did, it, it might not have solved every problem, but it definitely helped develop some sort of empathy in how it feels when the taunting and teasing was going on. It gave me a new non-confrontational language. I was able to say to them, because it happened regularly throughout our lessons in my classroom, it happened that taunting and teasing would start then. So rather than me saying, that's, that's taunting, that's teasing, that's not allowed, that's against the rules, I could say, can anyone see conflict building up here? I'd say, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, so it gave them ownership of it, and it allowed me to address their behavior without labeling it, that's bullying, that's slagging, it gave me a non-confrontational way of addressing their, their behavior. Um, this is the World Anti-Bullying Forum, and I'm, I'm conscious that we haven't really addressed bullying. Uh, and that's, that's because I, the idea, and I know the idea from Keith and, and, and Jim from the Chartered Institute of Ar Arbitration, was that this would be a preventative 
action before it ex escalates to the repetition and the intention of bullying. Um, this sort of language replaces the label of bullying. If you say to a student, that's bullying, their defense is up. No, it's not. Ask him, do this. It's defense, defense, defense. If you can say to a student, there's conflict happening here, what can we do about it? The defense mechanisms aren't up and we're able to get in at the problem maybe a bit more easier and get, get, get to the root of it. Um, so that's my conclusions. Thanks very much for listening. I'm going to hand over to Jason now. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. My name is Jason Horseman, and I'm the deputy principal of a large Dublin West post-primary school. We have in excess of 1,100 students, and as a school, similar to my colleagues, we're a representative microcosm of our wider communities with the trials and tribulations that go along with that. And yes, in case you haven't noticed, I do not have a Dublin accent. For my part in this program, I was obliged to borrow a class of first-year religion students. With the support of their teacher, who was quite willing to give them away, and with the agreement of the students, their parents, and of our board of management, you'll be seeing some of the images captured during the two class presentations given that followed the lesson planning that Gary and my colleagues have already spoken about. So a couple of observations from the classroom experience itself. My first is that the students could identify areas of conflict on a theoretical level, but actually didn't place themselves in that space until this area had been explored in greater detail. One of my first questions was for them to identify who had been in conflict in the last two weeks, and only one student could actually raise their hand. When that was explored further in terms of the possible examples, then the number increased quite dramatically. Students strongly identified bullying as a source or form of conflict. They very much engaged with the material and were very ready to put forward their strong opinions. Students could see a connection between bullying behavior and the potential for mediation somehow being involved in that process of reconciliation. And I certainly found that it was possible to introduce mediation as a concept to our very willing and eagerly anticipated students. The use of the mixed media, which we showed two examples of before, provided that platform for a more lively discussion and debate and gave them something concrete with which to set their own sight on. It provided elements of comic relief, as you hopefully experienced yourself, and opportunities for the students to connect with the broader concept of conflict and to increase their understanding. One of the big challenges that will present itself, even as a result of our initial introduction to this as an idea, is finding time to fit mediation skills into an already overcrowded curriculum, and that would be recognized at both the primary and at post-primary level. But my everyday experience as a deputy principal has some of the following highlights. I see teachers in conflict, often with other teachers, often with students, with their parents, and sometimes with management, and yes, that includes myself. Education is a people-focused enterprise focused on the quality of the educational experience for our students, and we want to help create holistically developed whole people when they leave our educational settings. I think it is very much possible that this is a skill set could be open to far more students in the Irish setting, and that mediation can certainly be a tool to help develop the culture of listening and finding common ground. I think also it provides that opportunity to empower students teachers in their wider communities to assist in this process of conflict resolution. Day-to-day -day conversations regarding conflict, regarding conflict resolution, demonstrates that leadership. And it also provides an opportunity for people to model that behavior and generate a change in the climate in all of our schools. I think also it provides opportunities to diffuse flashpoints. These can exist in a classroom setting from which you may not have any prior warning of and may suddenly arise out of any student sitting in front of you. But for some of our students, there's an element of disconnect. They're not necessarily uncaring, but they are unable or unaware to develop a greater sense of empathy, an appreciation and understanding of how others feel as a result of their behavior. Moving forward, 
I think there's certainly the potential for students to undertake more directed learning in the area of mediation. In the Irish context, and I'm not sure how familiar you are with it, at post-primary level, students engage in three years called the junior cycle. After this, they will sit their state certificate examination. That's happening today, starts today. Following this is an optional transition year. The transition being between the junior cycle and what will then be their leaving certificate, which is another state certification process. Scope does exist within that junior cycle, under the well-being heading, as mentioned before by my colleagues, and or within subjects such as CSP, religion, and others, as well as within that transition year, transition year sorry, where modules or part of a larger model of study enable our students to undertake this type of mediation skill development and training. I also see the value of this experience for the teachers themselves, within their own classrooms and within their own school environments, and hence into the wider community. It's provided an opportunity to develop it, to demonstrate teacher leadership and emergent leadership within the school, and that's a trait actively demonstrated by my colleagues beside me. The short course option for the junior cycle, the opportunity to embed something within transition year, all of these are opportunities which can be explored. I think also the opportunity to develop empathy and empathetic skills and agency as students can think and act for themselves, given the right tools, means that there's something valuable to create for a, for a society in the future. Developing that awareness around conflict resolution skills for all members of our school community can be nothing except valuable. So what's next? Do we develop that short course? I think that's part of the process. However, I think the first part has to be in terms of our teacher training. We were very fortunate to experience through the consultation between the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators of Ireland and with the help of the um, DCU's Anti-Bullying Centre, this opportunity for six teachers to be trained in this particular area. And I think there's certainly scope to do that. I think it also needs to start with school management. They have to see and experience the value for their school and their communities, the potential that this has to offer them. Obtain that buy-in from senior management and start to build all of our schools as restorative schools. Mediation gives students and teachers a new language to deal with that conflict in a non-confrontational way, as mentioned so strongly by Gary earlier before. I am going to call, after a moment, actually I'll do this part first if I may, could we please acknowledge the work of both Keith Keller, our poor teacher in mediation training, and James Bridgman from the Irish branch of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators. Uh, our big thanks also go to Helena Murphy and to Professor James O'Higgins Norman from the Anti Bullying Centre here at DCU. So our thanks go to them. Also, to acknowledge the support of our Board of Management students, staff, and schools from O'Connell Street School, Artscore Reach, Scotland in AFA, and of course, my own Hartstown Community School. I will mention before I do finalise or finish that if anyone is interested in talking about the work that we're doing in linking with the, our two representatives from the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, they'll be more than happy to, to continue that conversation after our presentation. But at this point, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention, and if anyone has any particular questions, then now would be an opportunity to put it forward. But thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So once the students understood what conflict is and ways to solve it, were they able to use this new thing like to solve problems during the rest of the school year or, or as a part of their lives, these mediation skills that they learned? We think that the opportunity is certainly presenting itself for them to develop those skills. We have found that the students are linking, already trying to link in, sorry, with their own student councils and think that there's a role that those students may be able to play in assisting them with those elements of, me of mediating conflicts as they may arise. Um, Hazel mentioned earlier that they still look for that older person, that older student or a teacher, an adult, to, to play that role as a mediator to assist them in resolving that conflict. Okay, so they do need assistance with that. Well, I think as a, okay. as, a, as a growing process, I think that would be still the way to go until they themselves can, can work those tools into their own lives. Okay. And something we discussed as well was that even in going forward, 
Um, the cohort of pupils I had were quite young. They were the youngest out of um, all of the schools. The fact that they demonstrated an awareness and uh, capability of taking on some of the language, because it is a, it's a foreign structure for them, it's a foreign strategy, um, it gave them more agency and there was a willingness for them to take on that agency even at that young age. So yes, I would agree with you, they do need, certainly in the school setting, they would need a professional in the background, um, someone, a, a trusted, that one thing that we hear about all the time, that trusted adult, that trusted relationship um, in the background to steer it, because there's quite a lot of pressure on a young person to be a mediator yeah. and not to be pulled either way by their friends, but it will be the exceptional pupil that would go forward in this role and be cultivated in this role going forward, you know. And how would you choose that? Well, I, it was all, I was very curious as to how my age group would respond to this. Again, I was there going, they're quite young, how will this work? They themselves came back with the idea that they liked if this particular pupil in the class acted as the mediator. This, um, they perceived that this pupil, they put forward three names, and when I looked at the three pupils that they put forward, and mm. we discussed it with my other colleagues, they were typically the, the child who turned up for training. They were typically the child who had that caring and empa um, empath empathetical element to them that when someone was hurt in the class, okay. bearing in mind they're quite a, a young children, are you okay? Are, they will be the child, and they are exceptional. They're exceptional amongst us as adults as well. We have to remind ourselves to cultivate these skills and promote these skills, who would ask the question and say, I know your mum wasn't well, how is she? You know? Okay, but so they kind of voted for them. They can, they can have mm -hmm. those unique skills, but I think we as adults, as teachers or otherwise, it is incumbent on, on us to cultivate those skills in the pupils, in our professional capacity, and then if we're parents as well, you know? I think, okay. I think also that's why it's important, as Jason was saying, teacher education yes. is really important because if you've just one teacher in the school who's trained in this and is kind of uh, tuned into this side of things, that's just one classroom, that get one set of students that gets access to it and the rest of the school. So it really has to be a cultural change in schools where if school management can promote this amongst whole staff. So no matter who that trusted adult is, because one student might trust me, or one, another student might trust Anne. So it really has to be kind of broadened out rather than that's the mediation teacher, uh, that sort of thing. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank, Thank you. 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 Yes, ma'am. I have a particular interest in, in professional supervision um, and uh, the work that you have outlined um, and the training that you've received is, is wonderful in relation to, to mediation and conflict resolution. Um, but you seem to be working kind of individually within your, your school settings. Um, I know this is early days, very early steps, and uh, I would uh, hope that that would grow and grow within your own, um, I suppose, locales. Um, just uh, have you thought about what, what uh, needs you have as mediator and what are the supports that may be there for you uh, in relation to mediation in schools. I think that is something that um, could be built in as, as the, the uh, I suppose, <laughs> idea and, and uh, need for this growth. Um, I'd certainly agree with, with the sentiment that yes, there needs to be support. Um, and I think that support can be quite varied in terms of how it might actually hit a range of, a range of areas. However, again, because this would really only just be starting, it then is going to just require that time and space to then identify what those needs are, to then put them in place in order to support people. But I think the work is important. Um, I think it has a growth opportunity, and I think now is the time to do it. And not necessarily wanted to take up any more of your time. If anyone has any other questions, well, sorry, ma'am, we'll just take yours as the last one. My apologies. Uh, well, I'm not sure if you have heard this, and I hope it's not happening here, but I have heard that once bullying is reported, that it's mandated to you know, bring in lawyers, bring in people to examine it, and it's becoming quite costly for the school district. So they are encouraging children not to tell. Mm -hmm. And I did like that board where you, know, you put up about conflict, but actually um, it's being practiced to encourage the kid children not to tell because they're fearful that they have to bring in legal and other resources, which costs the school a lot of money. So have you heard about this? No, um, thankfully. 
We certainly have robust procedures within schools. It's very much in policy that once something is um, brought to our attention, it must be investigated within the school um, and fair, um, fair participation by all parties. I, I don't suggest that we haven't gone there yet in some cases, but certainly I don't think it will be the norm. Mm -hmm. Has it the potential, has in every situation got the potential to escalate to the, the heights of things? That, yes, it does, I suppose, but um, I would be hopeful that that would be very unusual in our practices at the moment. And this, this process, amongst many others, um, being a way in which to mediate that, you know, happening. Um, well, it, it's out there, mm. so be aware of it, but it's yeah. just adding more confusion to the child as, you know, what is bullying and what's not bullying. And it also removes the, like, like the reality of it is it removes people further and further from the initial issue. And one of the things I like about mediation, I was involved in mediation prior to going into teaching, one of the things I like about it is it does offer the parties the opportunity to stay with the issue in hand. And from when I started out in teaching, and I bear in mind I work with very young children, it's only natural for a young child, four, five, six, to come up to you and go, on yard in particular, oh, miss so-and-so did this, so-and-so hurt my feelings, so-and-so hurt me physically. And it is only natural for the child to have an expectation that you as the adult will resolve that matter for them. However, I think other things that align, in my opinion, quite well at mediation and, and different practices in school is, an element of choice theory in that you will help the child, especially a young child, they don't have all the skill sets yet, but you will bring it back to them to say, well, what are you going to do about it? And that's not to alienate the child, but it's that the power remains with them. Um, and obviously you would meet that out in relation to their ability, their capacity and their age and their development stage. But the answer isn't always to take the problem away. You know, the, the, even for us as adults, if people could take our problems away, we wouldn't try, we wouldn't evolve. And I think we can start that a lot younger than we imagine with young children. Their capacity is there. And I say that as somebody who works with SEND children and mainstream children, their capacity would inspire you and delight you and keep you in awe. It's definitely there to be work, worked with. I think, sorry, just, just one more point, on, just on your original question as well, just the costliness and the, uh, how things are really escalating when, when bu bullying is mentioned. I, I think it's important to note that a, a key driving factor of the, the Chartered Institute of Arbitration in, in getting involved and in getting, they really want to get mediation skills into schools is they're seeing it, they're in the courts, they're seeing disputes escalate to the point where the courts are clogging up, legal fees are becoming astronomical um, and they really see developing mediation skills in people as young as possible uh, as a way to giving, uh, giving them the skills as adults to be able to resolve professional disputes and, and contract disputes and so on. Okay. And again, okay, well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.